Alright guys, Brazil have just beaten Switzerland by a goal to nil in a cagey game would be the correct word to describe it. Um, it wasn't the most free-flowing football ever. It was a much tougher game for Brazil than uh, the game against Serbia and that was no easy game for Brazil either. It took them uh, until about the hour mark to uh, win through a Richardson double. Today it took them to the 83rd minute to get the opening goal. Granted, they did score uh, around the hour mark again, uh, this time through it was uh, Rodrigo, no, Vinicius who, 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 who finished it off, I can't, I don't know why I thought it was Rodrigo, uh, he did miss the chance a few minutes earlier I think, but yeah, it was correctly disallowed though, it was a well taken goal, but earlier on in the move, Richarlison does come up, come from about five metres offside, and uh, does get a touch on, a vital touch on the ball to knock it past to Kanji and continue the move, so, it was correctly disallowed, um, I don't think you can really dispute that and I don't know how the linesman didn't spot it at the time, I'm, I think he must have assumed that uh, Richarlison didn't touch it and Akanji did or something like that but uh, even then I think you could still make a case of him interfering with play uh, so yeah, correct, correctly uh, overruled the, the opening the first time the ball went into the net for Brazil. But Casemiro's winner, an absolutely brilliant strike um, on the half volley. It does take a little nick off of Kanji, which, uh, I mean, puts it even further in the corner, makes it a bit better, if anything. But um, I still don't think Jan Sommer saves it as good as he is uh, if it doesn't take the deflection. It had been close, he might have actually died for it then. But yeah, really good strike from Casemiro. And Brazil, this game, they just struggled to get into their rhythm, really. Um, I, I thought uh, that in the last game, Neymar had been shoved into midfield and was being played because, you know, he's Neymar. You need to play him a bit of like a Ronaldo-Portugal situation where he's just undroppable, not because of how he plays, but because of who he is rather than anything else. Um, but I think in this game, they, they, they were missing him a little bit because... Paqueta didn't really um, didn't really suit being the attacking one out of the three midfielders for some reason, despite that's the role that he plays so well at club level. And when he has been on the pitch for West Ham this season, he has had a few games where he's played that role really well. And obviously he's done it loads of times over the past few years for Lyon. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a bit strange. And... It was only when Fred came off for Rodrigo and Brazil went for like almost like a front four in the end. It, it was like 4-2-4 and also Bruno Guimaraes coming on um, as, as well. It, it was only then really that um, Brazil started to get control of the game because up until that point, I think Switzerland, you could argue, probably had as many chances to score as Brazil did because Brazil only really had in the first half, that one chance from Vinicius where he, he made, didn't make proper contact with it at all but still managed to keep it on target, uh, forcing Jan Sommer into a save. But other than that, there really wasn't a lot else created by Brazil. So that, that change by Tite um, early in the second half did change things a bit for Brazil. And from then on, Switzerland uh, just decided, right, we're going to shut up shop. We're not realistically going to win this game. We'll just try and play for the nil-nil draw. And of course, by the time Brazil went in front, it was too late for Switzerland to do anything because they'd made the defensive changes and um, they were never going to be able to throw all, all those players forward and keep it tight at the back without like conceding the second. Um, and goal difference is obviously a big thing at, at this uh, World Cup in the group stages. And uh, yeah, so Switzerland definitely played for the draw. You, I think you could see it in the way that they set up. They uh, dropped Shakiri from the starting eleven and went for the more hard-working Gibral. So uh, in, in like a 4-4-2 diamond at, at times, it, it was really just Mbolo and Vargas up front on, on their own at times uh, with a midfield four just trying to stop Brazil getting in any, any sort of rhythm. And they did that successfully for the majority of the game. It was only towards the end that Brazil did start to get control uh, when, when they made quite a few substitutions, bringing on Anthony and Gabriel Jesus as well as uh, Rodrigo and Bruno, who I've already mentioned. Um, but yeah, Brazil got the job done. They're through in this group. I think they're only one of two teams 
to win every single, well, I'll say every single, there's only been two. There are only one of two teams to win uh, both their games in this group stage so far. I mean, Portugal can still technically do it in year, against Uruguay in uh, an hour's time after I've made this video. Um, but yeah, the, only two teams winning both their games, that, that's uh, quite rare that that happens uh, when you think about it. So. Yeah, um, it's, it's been quite a competitive World Cup. I mean, there's been a few boring games, but there's also been, like today, some really exciting games. So, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, but, yeah, Brazil, they're, they're through. Uh, they're definitely going to be one of the teams in contention of winning the competition. Switzerland still have uh, work to do against Serbia. That, that should be a really exciting game. You'd expect Brazil to beat Cameroon in the final game, although... Maybe that works out quite well for Cameroon, like because they 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 played quite well today, especially coming back from two goals down. And if Brazil decide to rest a few players, I know they have got a ridiculous uh, like squad depth, but you know the, the, the they're going to be playing players who aren't used to playing with each other. So maybe who knows? Cameroon can just about pull off a shock one nil win out of out of nowhere. I wouldn't have thought so because Cameroon's defence does look quite leaky at times, but um, you never know. And Switzerland v Serbia in in that game, I would I would probably it's it's quite a tough one to call that because Switzerland would be the sensible pick, and also Switzerland only needs a draw, of course. Um, because they're, they're on three points and Serbia are on one point. So, yeah, the sensible option would be to say Switzerland will win or they'll draw and they'll go through. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll 100% be, be close that game. I'll, I'll back Switzerland because they always seem to do it. They always seem to make it through to the round of 16. It's never spectacular, but they just get the job done and usually they go out of the round of 16. I mean... That, let's not lie, but um, yeah, they're, they're usually uh, good at getting through the group stages, so I'll, I'll, I'll predict they'll do the same again this year. But yeah, Brazil, um, they're, they're through, but if, if we're talking about are they going to win the competition, France have been the most impressive team to me so far. I, I thought they were going to have an underwhelming World Cup just like the Euros uh, last summer, but um, to be fair to them, they, they've come out all gun but up there come out all guns blazing, uh, scoring six goals in their first two games. Um, and have looked really impressive. I just thought there might be a, a bit too much uh, like problems within the squad in terms of, uh, I don't know, socially, uh, or, or like with the whole Pogba and Mbappe thing and uh, Rabiot causing problems. Like there's loads of things, but if they can keep it together, that they've got more than enough talent to win this World Cup, I think. But Brazil will definitely uh, challenge them, that, that's one thing for sure. Um, th there were a few dodgy moments, to be fair, for Brazil in this game. Alisson nearly got caught out by Mbolo in, early on in the second half. Uh, there, there was a couple of goal line scrambles which Brazil managed to just about get the ball away. So Brazil aren't definitely aren't unbeatable because they've played two... Um, two good teams so far in the group stage, but not like world-class teams, if that makes sense. Two solid, tough to break down, with a little bit going forward as well, teams. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's hard to say, really. Um, but they, they've got the job done anyway, uh, so you've got to give them the credit for that. But anyway, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.